It's KD, baby, and we back for another episode of Money Talks. Now, this one, this one is huge. This one is huge. First off, let me say I appreciate my guest. He came through. He dropped jewels. I'm not going to take too long on the intro. We're going to get right to it. But wholesale and real estate, right? You read the title. You hear about it all the time. How am I able to sell houses with no real estate license? How am I able to, you know, make these big time flips with no cash and no credit of my own? Is this real or is it just a scheme? You see the we buy houses signs all over the place. Are those actually getting traction? What's really going on in this industry? What type of seller is looking to buy their house or sell their house, I should say, by calling off a sign? Like who's 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 doing this? Who's doing this? You got real estate agents. Usually that's the go to. But this wholesale thing has been huge over the Internet. So I wanted to get some insight on the topic to see if this is actually legit as the gurus, the gurus say it is. You see astronomical deals. Are these guys really getting fifteen thousand dollars a deal? Are these people really getting twenty thousand dollars a deal? Twenty five thousand dollars a deal, sometimes taking three to four months to get very short periods of time. People making large lump sums of money. I don't know. It may be true. It may not be true. Let's get into it, man. Another episode of Money Talks. All right, we back for another episode of Money Talks. This is a special one, man. This is my first virtual interview. So first off, man, introduce the people. Let them know who I'm talking to. Let them know. I see that they can see by the title. Obviously, they know what's going on, but let them know a little bit about yourself and where you come from, man. Uh, my name's Eric. Um, I'm originally from Florida, a small town in Florida called Green Coast Springs. It's probably like 30 minutes outside of Jacksonville. Um, I came to California in 2008, played football out here. Then I moved to Las Vegas where I, where I met, um, well, I met you before then, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm well, no, no, I met you around that time. No, we met, it. We met yeah. in Vegas. We met in Vegas. For uh, people that does not not watching, we... This is a good friend of mine, like a brother to me. So I had to get him on. I've been bugging him. You know, he finally took the time to do the interview. Go ahead, man. I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't mean no, to no, cut you off. No, no, you're good. You're good. So I received the football scholarship to UNLV. That's where I met Kurt at. And I moved back to California after that. And I kind of moved back and forth to Las Vegas and California um, for a couple of years. And then I found out about wholesaling in 2017. And mm -hmm. moved back to California in 2018, and I did my first deal. Okay, so let's let's backtrack a little bit. Okay, you said you went to college. You received a scholarship at UNLV. Yes, um, big time football player. I'm assuming grew up playing football. Star athlete. What did you go to school for? <laughs> Man, you know, you know the football. <laughs> You know the football degrees they want you to um try to get a degree in just so you can make it a practice. Um uh, psychology? <laughs> psychology. Psychology. Yeah, psychology. Psychology. Did you ever really have any interest in psychology while going to UNLV while while being a college? No. And then especially when I found out psychology, because it sounded like this, you know what I'm saying, this word that you know what I'm saying, you might get a crazy job, but then I found out you psychology degrees, you're gonna be like a social worker with all of us. So no, I was never interested in uh, that degree. So you never really had any interest in this. You're simply picking this major because it's keeping you on the football field. Is that exactly. is that what I'm getting? Yeah, the, the okay. other football. Exactly. Okay. So going into college, did you actually have any interests outside of football? Like, did your life have any plans as far as what happened if football wasn't going to work? Nah, man. You know, I'm just, I'm just like the, just like everybody else, man. I thought it was gonna be NFL or pretty much nothing. So I had no other mm. interest outside of football. I was just one track minded and trying to make it to the league for the most part. What was that period of time like? When okay, I'm not in the league. I'm not in the NFL. I need to find something to do. I need to find something to better myself. And to find something productive and find something that makes money and, and good money. What was your life like then? What were you going through? And you okay. know, how did you stumble upon this? 
Okay, that period of time it lasted. I think we, we was done and um you left you left a year before me because you transferred to Montana State, right? Yeah, but I left, I left in, UNLV uh, twenty twelve. So I left UNLV like 2013, 2014. Yeah. So anywhere from twenty, let's say twenty fourteen to twenty seventeen, man, I was just trying to find myself. You know, not going into um, not not going to NFL. I did do some trials. I had a trial with some CFL teams. I did a workout with the um, Oakland Raiders. I, I I did all that, and then what else I did? And then after I realized I wasn't finna go to the NFL, I you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I could have went to the CFL, but and uh, some arena league teams, but I found out how much they get paid, and that wasn't, you know, what I'm saying it wasn't attractive. So I was like, man, mm-hmm. let me find something else for my for, for me to do. So I picked up. How long? Person. How hold on, hold on. How long did that take? Because that's a short span from you trying to do the football thing to you finding wholesaling. How long was that? How long did that take? Well, was that, that took, some years? Was that a couple years? That or? took years. I didn't find wholesaling until like 2017. From tw- So 2014 mm. to 2017, that's when You're I just finally in limbo. Found. Yeah, no, I, well, well, I really wasn't it. Well, yeah, I was, t- I was, I was working like you know, like dead end, like factory jobs. But I also had got into personal training, so I oh. did that a lot. That's what I was doing. I was like working at a gym, you know, being a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. Shout out to personal trainers. I actually did a video on the personal trainer. He, he's gotten his, he, his thing really going. But mm-hmm. um, okay, so now we're here. We're 2017. Mm-hmm. Eric is in uh, dead end job. At the time. In Las Vegas. I'm in Las Vegas at the time. Dead end job after dead end job after dead end job. Yeah, but around this time, I really want to say it, it was just I want to say it's a dead end job because I was actually this when I was the, being you know a barback slash bartender at the team mobile okay. arena. So and in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. and then I actually I For actually money. had a I, I actually got an interview and I think I told you this in the past at at at, at the Cos at the Cosmo and the cat who was mm-hmm. interviewing he actually knew a good friend of ours Philip Payne. So I shout actually got the job. Off your, shout out to Phil. I actually got a yeah. job just off, just off that relationship. But okay. then you know what I'm saying they did like a um they did a hair a, a hair sample <laughs> far as the marijuana and I ain't passed that. So I was crushed, okay. man. So you know what I'm saying that, that ain't working out. That hurt your spirit. That yeah, hurt that your hurt spirit. Me, so what was that job looking like yearly? Oh, that job yearly is going easily easily. I was gonna make over six figures easily. Probably yeah. like, probably like anywhere because. It was at the Cosmo, and, and you do a lot of the um, you do a lot of the banquets and stuff like that. And them cats be them cats was easily making like anywhere from they probably work like three to four days a week, but they making anywhere from like a thousand to like twelve hundred dollars a day. That's a nugget for everybody who's out there watching. Yeah. When I cover these bartenders and these Vegas bartenders and these Vegas barbacks, if you're in the Las Vegas region, this is huge for you. <laughs> You don't need a degree, obviously, to yeah. make six figures because, you know, in that economy out there, that's what that life is all about, 24-7. You know, drinks being served up 24-7. So that's a real lucrative career, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's crazy to, to say, but, you know, a bartender is a real-life career. Out there. <laughs> Definitely. So if that's what you're looking for, you know, we're going to get, I'm going to get a video. I'm going to get somebody to really break down those numbers for you. But that's a good job, too. I enjoy on um, the whole bartending thing, man. Talk to the people. And I mean, it's almost like, mm-hmm. man, if um you a male, it's almost kind of, um I ain't going to say it's equivalent, but I guess you kind of feel like how I feel to be a, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For, um, I guess it's kind of like, you can say it's fast money, like a stripper mate, because you, I mean, <laughs> you, get, you get some good tips, man. You leaving out of there yeah, with 300 to like $1,000. I mean, yeah, it's pretty man. good, man. I mean, yeah. I've seen valet guys in Vegas make big bank. You know, oh, yeah, that's another good so I could imagine, you know, I'm going to touch, but I'm going to get some interviews for the people out there. I'm going to get some interviews. But how did you find wholesaling? How did you stumble upon it? Man, t- man, it was like originally cuz we sorry originally, not to cut yeah. off, but we got to take it back. This is, you know, people know about this now, but they and and still a lot of people don't know about this. Yeah. But this is back in 2017. How did you find out about this? Man, so okay, I had found out that I failed the drug test so I wasn't going to get the job and I was just at home one day just had got off work and um, uh, um, flip man video. Um, Ty Taylor and you cats don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a guy on YouTube called the Flip Man. He pretty much, um, pretty much give you the gist of for like what's wholesaling about. 
And then I seen a video of his and I clicked and it's like, you know, make fifteen thousand dollars flipping houses, whatever, with no money and no credit. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, you you seen them commercials, you like, man, this can't be true. So I'm looking like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I clicked on the videos and I slowly started going to the videos on his channel and I knew that I, I didn't get a job at the Cosmos, so I was gonna move back to California in a couple of months. So I mm-hmm. said, Okay, I'm gonna learn as much as I can right now. And then when I get back to California, I'm gonna hit the ground running. Mm. How long did it take you to learn everything you knew? You just got all the information straight from the school of YouTube? Did you purchase any courses? Like, okay. how did you get all the information that you needed? Okay, I pretty much had the gist of like what the whole thing was about just off mm-hmm. um, Flipman's channel. He got he got, he got a real good channel with a whole bunch of information, all the information you end up you ever need to wholesale. But I but I but I also purchased his course because I was still you know what I'm saying new to wholesale at the time. So I ain't want if I got myself in a situation and I ain't know what to do. I wanted to be able to contact Ty and you know what I'm saying pretty much. Um, get me through the situation and that pretty much come with his contract i mean with his mm-hmm. course his his phone number so you can ask him you know questions or whatever if you get in the crunch for anybody who's out there that's looking to get into this do you know remember I, and it's probably went up n- since then because that's that was 2017 mm-hmm. do you know how much that course was for somebody making looking to make that initial investment Man, this and did not, did not, cause I mean, I paid for that question like two payments, and this time I have no money, man. I think then I paid like, I want to say it was like three thousand dollars. I think it was three thousand dollars then. Three thousand dollars. Then they have no money, so that was a bet you were willing to take on yourself. Yeah, I put, what that's you my, have to do. That was my whole work check, and and, mm-hmm. and, and I think even uh even my girl, she she had um. Uh, then she had, you know, give me like 500 whatever, like what was left, you know what I'm saying, the balance whatever, to pay it for. Okay. So you completely bet on yourself. And after you took that gamble, what did you do? What was first steps in wholesaling for Eric out there in California? What what part of California are you in? Where are you I'm in, in California I'm in, setting this up? I'm in Fresno, California, so pretty much the mm-hmm. Central Valley. Okay, so you're in the Central Valley. Yeah. And what did you do as far as marketing? Like what was taught by Flipman to how you can get these deals. How was this even possible? Well, one of the big things that Flipman always talked about was bandit signs. And it was crazy because I always seen What's that? Signs, um, What's a bandit sign? It's pretty much the we buy houses signs that pretty much Got it. they probably see in the hood or in the community, whatever. Got it. So, but yeah, it was weird because I used to always see these signs even growing up. So this this years and years and years and years ago, but I you you know you don't you don't understand exactly what them signs is for and what they mean. But he pretty much said that this is a good way to get started, especially if you wasn't, because I'm not the most talkative person, like do the cold call and all that. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I ordered some bandit signs and I put some signs out. Okay. So you put the signs out. Mm-hmm. Was that really your only form of marketing at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was okay. Marketing. So are you getting calls off of these signs? Like what? Man, I got, I end up got, I end up getting, I think, all like, including a deal I got, and I, I end up, I am, I, um, yeah, I end up getting like three calls. I end up getting like three. You end calls. up getting three calls, and you said including yeah. the deal you got. Yeah, so you so, got three calls. Yeah, I got one oh, call. This uh-huh. um, this guy um, this guy mother had just passed away. Him and his girl was living in the house, and he was looking to sell the property. And mm-hmm. I don't remember what happened. I I don't know why we ain't work out a deal, whatever. But I didn't get that deal. And then I remember getting another call by um this gentleman. He was trying to sell a trailer because he was um moving out to the beaches or whatever. But mm-hmm. I ended up not doing that. And then the third call was the the deal, pretty much. Wow. So talk to us a little bit about that experience. A little bit about how you felt, how your confidence may have swayed when you got those calls, and what some of those walkthroughs was like for somebody who's just getting started off in this. Did you feel comfortable? Did you feel like you got enough information off of the flip man? Mm-hmm. You know, what was really going through your mind? Well, when I received the calls, of course, I was nervous because I'm just like, I'm thinking to myself, like, like what person going to think? You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 because I, I want no professional. I ain't know too much about real estate. And I'm thinking, like, if I show up to somebody's house, like, and I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, like, what person really going to trust me and think that I'm going to purchase the house? So that was one of the things that was in the back of my head. 
And um, like I said, the phone calls, of course, I was nervous, but Flipman also offered a script. So I pretty much just went line by line on a script. And then, you know what I'm saying? Dope. Dope. So how long would you say it was from when you started putting the signs up to when you got that call and when you got that first deal, that initial deal? It took me anywhere from like, I'm going to say, I'm going to say like two months and some change. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say like, I'm going to say like two months. It's kind of, because it's, it's been so long ago. I'm going to say like two months. Two months. I'm gonna say you like started months. putting the signs up and within two months you got a deal. Now, let me ask you this. How common is that? Is that common in this game? Um, I would say, um, cause, cause, cause I hear different stories. I hear some people that get a first deal in 30 days. Some uh -huh. people it take them um, nine months. Some people take a year, but, and to be honest, even at the time, I wouldn't, even, I wasn't even being consistent with putting up, putting out the signs. I probably put mm -hmm. out like, don't tell I probably people put that. Out, like two batches. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't do what don't, I did. Cause you will get it yeah. faster than what I did. But yeah. I put out like two batches <laughs> of signs. I remember like yesterday, I put out like two batches. Mm -hmm. Probably two I batches. paid like, I paid. I, I ordered two bat one. My first batch was a hundred dollars. My second batch was hundred dollars. So I spent like two hundred dollars on batting signs. Two hundred dollars. Yeah. So you're up to about now. You're up to about three thousand and two hundred dollars. Yeah, thirty two hundred. Yeah. Initial investment. Correct. Um, no real overhead other than the gas that you're putting in the car to hang these signs up. Yeah. Right? Talk to us about that first deal. How did that play out? How did that situation pan out? You know, what was the situation? And what is what do let the people know what type of stuff they have to be ready for? How did you close? Man, the first deal was crazy, man. Cause I was um and now at this time when I moved back to Fresno, I was working like a dead end job at, the, at, at like this warehouse or whatever. So like I used to go to work listening to Flipman, you know what I'm saying? Flipman interviews and this person to come on there said they made ten thousand their first deal. They made fifteen thousand dollars their first deal. So I used to tell myself every night I went to work because I, I I was working like the um the night shift. I was like, man, if if I get a call and I get my first deal and I can make ten thousand dollars, like man, I'm gonna quit this job. You know what I'm saying? In a second, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> so man, yeah, I I I I got a call one day, man. I was at the house chilling. This guy called me. I still remember his name to this day. His name was Ruben. And he was pretty much like, um, yeah, uh, I seen your sign. Um, I'm looking to sell my house. And then we pretty much got into, you know what I'm saying, a gist of his situation. He explained that his wife had passed like a uh, um year early. And then he had he had took something, his job had gave him some like some some amount of money. But he hadn't to pay the taxes on that money. So the IRS pretty much had a lien on his house. So he mm. owed the IRS like I think it was like maybe like maybe like thirty to fifty thousand. Mm. So at this point, are you thinking, is this real? Like this is real. Now it's finally yeah, it's finally yeah, get real yeah, to yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And are you calling Flip Man for help? Like how you yeah, close yeah. this because you got that did. experience at this point. Okay. 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 So this pretty much happened. So the guy called me and he was pretty much like, um, like we went, he gave me the information. I did a research on the property. So, um, I did the ARV, the ARV, which is the after, uh, after repair value, just meaning how much would a house appraise for after, after the rehab is done and everything is fixed up mm -hmm. to HDTV type, you know what I'm saying? Type mm -hmm. quality, whatever. And then I'm like, okay, this house gonna lease this. This house will go for like three hundred thousand. So, mm -hmm. Ruben, he ended up um, I don't know, but I end up yeah, I end up calling him back, and we end up talking a little further. And he was just telling about the situation, like his timeline to get out and whatever. And then he was he, I, I <laughs> it's crazy because I'm trying to remember all this shit. But um, mm -hmm. I remember him telling me he was like, man, he was like, Eric, I don't want um. I don't know if he said I don't want a lot. Uh, I don't want like like I'm that greedy. He said he said the sudden something, something like that, and I'm like okay, you know what I'm saying? Like I know it's like in my head I already did my homework, so I'm knowing it's worth three hundred thousand. So he was <laughs> like, so he just said he was like he was like, can you give me um? He was like, can you give me a hundred and um? Yeah yeah. He was like, can you give me a hundred and fifty thousand? 
So did my your head, eye, uh, uh, are your okay. eyes line up at this yeah, point? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, my head, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I, if this is me, I'm like, yo, this, yeah. this can't be real. This is yeah, too good yeah. to be true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. This is crazy. Yeah, so in my head, you know, watching all the Flipman videos and any, like, a house that's worth 300000 if you got owners saying, like, pretty much they want half of what the house, house is valued at, you know in your head, like, that alarm going off, like, oh, this is a deal, this is a deal. And mm -hmm. not only is it a deal, this could be a big deal, depending mm -hmm. on the um, the rehab. So yes. I was like, I was like, oh, okay, Ruben, I don't sound bad, but I was like, pretty much, you know, get a whole look, let me talk to my partner thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did that, and I called him back, and it was such a great deal. I said, Ruben, I, I called him back. I said, Ruben, I got some good news for you, man. I know you wanted one, 150 but my partner said we could actually give you 155 Okay. You know what I'm so saying? Being generous it, with it. Yeah, yeah, Being yeah, generous yeah. with it. You yeah, know, and yeah. that goes a long way yeah. for anybody out there watching. Yeah. You know, don't. it's no need to, to really cheat people because it's all going to come back to you, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, but damn. Damn, was the house? Did you do a walkthrough through the house? And did the yeah. house need major rehab? Did it need major? You no, know, nah, man. And it's crazy. I still got the video of that um that walkthrough on my um, my work phone. But yeah, when I went through the house, I mean, it had like it had like well, it had like a hole in the wall. And it need like some paint and some carpet. With, but pretty much just cosmetic work. The, the house yeah. was in good. It was in good condition. Wow, wow. Yeah. So you do the math. Uh, he's asking for you were able to give him one fifty five. Let the people know how wholesaling works and where your where your take comes in at. Where does okay. Eric get paid in the whole sense of this wholesale deal? And how do you how are you able to do this with no real estate license? Okay, so wholesaling. I ask you a first question first. So wholesaling pretty mm -hmm. much like okay, me as the wholesaler, I'm pretty much the middleman. So you got a seller. You got me, the wholesaler, and then you're going to have an end buyer. Mm -hmm. My job as the wholesaler is to put the property on a contract with the seller at a price. Mm -hmm. So for this instance, I think I end up putting that property. Well, I put that property on a contract for $155, and um, then um, I, I marked it up for the buyer. So pretty much, I think I marked it up to, two, I think it was $225 or something like that. So I think that's like seventy grand if I'm not mistaken, or whatever like that. But pretty much, um, yeah, yeah, pretty much that. So uh, I mark it up, and then you and as the wholesaler, you pretty much get what's in between. So I get, I get what's between the one fifty five to the two twenty five. Mm. And then, um, whoa, whoa. And then, then go ahead, go ahead. That second question. Hit that second question. For oh me. yeah, and and then. You said why you don't need a license? To how don't you need a license? How are you able to just go in and okay. conduct these type of deals? Like okay, how is as a wholesaler, possible? you're not a realtor. You know what I'm saying? You're not acting on somebody else's behalf. You don't need a license as a wholesaler because when you got a um, I don't have a contract contract on my desk, but when you interject yourself in the contract, mm -hmm. you become a part of the deal. So you're not representing no nobody. You know what I'm saying? You actually on the contract with the seller. Got you. Yeah. So wow. as, as as long as you got in the contract, you don't need no um certification. Uh, um no um uh, well I know a couple states, you know, they pass all these these laws, whatever. You might need a, a um um I don't I don't know what they call it, a broker license or something now, but in okay. most of the states you ain't gotta worry about that. It's just a couple of them. So you know, anybody who's looking to get into this. Make sure that your state does not require a broker's license because if you get into this and your state does require a broker's license and you mess around and conduct a deal, someone may be coming after you. They will come after you, you know. So make yeah, sure. Yeah, but even with that, it's ways around that. Like mm -hmm. you could put a house. Like I mean, you the best best thing you could do is just work with a um brokerage, and I mean they're gonna be taking a fee, but I mean it's better than nothing. Okay. So we got two months. We got two months of you marketing. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting close to closing that deal. Did you close that deal? And you you don't have to disclose the exact number, but give us a good range of what you made from that first deal, if you made anything from because you you got to admit, man. I mean, you you quit your job. You started this full fledged. You're two months in, and you're this close to closing the deal. 
Mm-hmm. That's epic. What did that look like? What did that look like for you? Well, like I said, let me do the math because I, but I put a house up on the contract. Like I said, I put a house up on the contract for um 155 and mm-hmm. I marked it up for my end buyer at 225 And I think that's 70000 if I'm not mistaken. Because that's 70000 That's around 70000 Because it's worth, it's worth, uh, it was worth 300 like just say 315000 yeah. So you downsold the house. You wanted to downsold the house so it could still be a deal. Is that what yeah, I'm hearing? Yeah. Well, not. It's not. It's not a downsell because the only way I was gonna get three fifteen if say if if I put, the house put up that in the work contract in. and then uh-huh. yeah I put the work in and then I put it back on the MLS myself. Got but you. Got seeing you. I put it at two twenty five because as a wholesaler you gotta leave some. You got to leave some room for your end buyer to make a profit, too, because they doing yeah. all, you know what I'm saying? They taking the risk. They doing okay. the rehabs and, you know what I'm saying, all that on the property. And that's what I meant. I didn't mean yeah. by a bad thing, but yeah, you, yeah, I got you. you like that better than me. Yeah. Damn. For anybody out there that's listening, I don't know if that just went over your head because we kind of glossed over it. But his first deal after two months was 70 <laughs> Well, it wasn't. Well, well, like I said, the paperwork, I had, like, it. Before I met with my end buyer, John, shout out to John. Mm-hmm. I had it, you feel me? I had it contracted for like my spread was gonna be seventy thousand. I met him at a Starbucks and he was just like, you know what I'm saying? Eric, can can you can you see yourself going any lower? This and that, this and that. Uh-huh. So I dropped my price, I dropped my price like three grand. So I ended up at like sixty seven thousand. And then of course he still wanna negotiate. I'm like, yeah. John, I can't go, I can't go no lower. This is a smoking yeah. deal. Like you know, I go to another buyer and he gonna pay me yeah, the full seventy. Yeah. So yeah, I end up getting um just to let just to let you and your audience know, I end up making sixty seven thousand dollars my first deal. And we round up here, so seventy thousand, the first deal you made in two months, what people struggle to get in an entire year. <laughs> what I struggled, that's the most money ever. You know, what I'm I haven't seen in my Is that life. The most ever you ever seen it yeah, at I one time. He's yeah, no question. Wow, wow. No question. So that, that's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing, and I can imagine that propelled you to go into this full throttle. At that point, have you ever have you looked back since within this wholesale? And how often do you see deals like that in this game? Is that just like a one time thing? Can people really expect to see these numbers? Man, well, those kind of deals, I'ma say, you know what I'm saying? You could definitely, um, you could definitely get home run deals like that. But I'ma say you'll probably see those kind of deals done in like states like California, probably mm-hmm. like the New Yorks, um, probably like the Miamis. States where real estate is so high that your spread can't help but be, you know what I'm saying? Oh, got you. Got you. That crazy, like that high. But yeah, that's not that's not like a sixty seven thousand dollar deal. That's not a normal deal, though. To be honest, that's not a normal deal. Mm. That's not a, even a normal deal in California. Well, I, well, I'm gonna say it's a normal deal in places like L.A. and places like probably like San Francisco, probably fifty thousand dollars plus. That's probably like a normal deal. But in places like Fresno and and other places in California, that's not a normal deal. No. Okay. How tough is the competition getting into this? And how hard do you really have to work in order to reap some of those benefits? Because like you expressed earlier, it took you two months and you barely was putting up signs. You you bought 200 signs, but, you know, I would expect you to get more on it. Is that is that doable? Is is the person going to land a deal like that if they really put in minimal effort? I would say, well, I, well, yeah, I mean, it just it, it, I mean, it happened. It happened. I got lucky. Am I gonna mm-hmm. say that if somebody go out here and put up two hundred banner signs, they're gonna get a sixty-seven thousand dollar deal? Um, uh, I would say no, but is it? I, 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 matter of fact, I wouldn't say no. Is it possible? Yeah, but I would put in more work than I put in at first, and then you'll get because not only would you, you know, what I'm saying, not only would you get a uh, like a uh, um a big assignment fee like that. But mm-hmm. you, I mean, you'll probably end up closing multiple deals with, you know what I'm saying, faster than me in a shorter period of time. So, mm. yeah. Are there any nuances within wholesale, different niches within wholesale? Or is it like like it's wholesale pretty broad? 
Is there like, some, would you advise people to like is there different not industries but different lanes within wholesale? You know what I'm saying? Like a lane that you can focus on the market. Oh, like or market. A lane, market, yeah. But I'm 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 like because I've heard stuff like uh you know like foreclosures. Oh, you know, okay, if okay. You wanted okay, to focus on just foreclosures or just other type of properties that may, some may be happening to them. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got lanes? you. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely different. Um, I guess you could say, um, it's definitely different list and um, people you could go after. Kurt mentioned you got pre foreclosures, you got probate. That just means when somebody passed away and they kid might mm -hmm. inherit the house, they might be looking to sell. You got um you got a, a, another list that they, they call the water shutoff list. So it's just, just people who, you know what I'm saying, they moving or they can't pay their water bill for whatever. You know what I'm saying? Cause cause all the lists you want to go after is like what we call like motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. Then you got people with fire damaged properties. Then a lot of people do um what they call driving for dollars, that's just going around your neighborhood and finding a property that stick out, you know what I'm saying, might have high grass, the roof might have a tarp on it or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. And um, what else I can think of? Uh, what else I can think of? Uh, that's all I can think of right now. But yeah, Is there a specific method that you zone in and focus on? As far as marketing? Uh, as yeah. far as like a list? Just far as lists is like, oh, do you um, have a specific go-to that you deal with? Yeah, 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 yeah. My main list... Is driving for dollars and probates. They don't know mm. my main list. So that works best for you. And yeah. somebody getting in, just starting, what would you say, uh, depending on their situation, what's a good marketing budget to start with? Like, how much do you market monthly? Man, a good marketing budget? I would say, like, I mean, like I said, I got in the game with, you know, I paid for the course, but just on the marketing itself, it's been like 200 So, I mean, if... If you could start with probably about 200 banded signs, that's pretty good. And far as marketing, I mean, it just depends on, like, what you want to do. I I normally, right, right now, of course, I kind of scaled up. So I spend anywhere from, like, in any given month, I spend probably, like, eh, like mm, around, like, $2,000. You spend 2000 on marketing. Yeah. And you see that back within, but people could spend way less. I don't like, I don't because I don't want to put out like what I spend, and then people thinking like they don't got two thousand dollars. Like, nah, you get out here and get a drive for dollars app for like a hundred dollars. And you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Get you could get a deal, like, you don't need that much money to uh, market. Give people some of the cheap ways that they can do this, you know, as opposed if they don't have those two thousand dollars. What, what okay, the, the, the cheap ways I'll say I do. Bennett sign, so you get a you get Bennett get a batch for a hundred for like a hundred dollars. You think those still work? Yeah, no, nah, definitely still work. Like, of course, like you know, what I'm saying it's gonna be a little different in different locations, but I'll try to Bennett signs. I do. Um, you get a drive for dollars app. It's called Deal Machine. You can just go around adding properties, and then you can skip trace them in the app. And skip trace is pretty much just getting the the owner's phone number and give them a call, and you know. Pitch them your offer and see if they're interested in selling their property. And uh, another thing I would do, I would just say networking, going and getting in, getting on Facebook and just asking people, you know what I'm saying? Tell them you're looking to buy a house. Are you looking to buy a couple of houses? Do they know anybody looking to sell a property? Mm. Realistically, monthly, what's a person looking at? I mean, obviously, you made about 30, if we, if we splitting it up, you know, Let's say thirty. Let's just say thirty-four. You made about thirty-four uh, thousand, you know, a month in two months within that deal. But is it that consistent, or is it some months that you know maybe you go cold turkey? Like, oh no, I definitely yeah I, yeah I definitely had months in the past where I ain't where I, I ain't closed no deals. But the beautiful thing about wholesaling is it's. it's Cause it's not really like you living check to check, especially if you ain't got no crazy expenses. Cause I mean, if you making like my like my average deal be thirty thousand. So if you making mm. thirty thousand on a deal, and say you go a month and you don't close a deal, I mean, it's not like you starving. You know what I'm saying? You pretty much you yeah. you're still good. If you if you know how to manage that money, yeah, but it do be the club but, every week. Yeah, but you will have some months where. You could you could market and you ain't gonna close you probably won't close no deals. You I, mm -hmm. I you'll close like 
three one month, and then next month you close one. That, yeah, that, that definitely happens. Do you have a goal that you shoot for yearly on, on deals that you want to get in lockdown? And is there anything within wholesaling that allows you to get money residually without getting those deals, those consistent deals? Like, is it anything you can lock in or where you bringing in money monthly? You get what I'm saying? Like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. I get what you're yeah, I don't shoot. Um, at first, I used to shoot for like I want to close three deals a month. I want to close five deals a month or whatever. But now, now I'm more so focused on I want to make this amount of money off a deal a month. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. say if say if say Kurt say you living in like Alabama or whatever, and say you closing three deals a month, and the average house price in Alabama is is it's gonna be way lower than California. So say you closing six deals a month and you making ten thousand dollars off off each deal but i'm a california and just say i close a deal and i made sixty seven thousand off one deal okay we both made the same amount of money but you did more work than i did to get yes. this amount of money so yes I, i'm more so focused on um the amount the amount of money each deal um makes versus closing a certain amount of deals and far as on the um the residual income there's no residual income in wholesaling that's pretty much like a like you probably gotta buy some rentals and um okay. pretty much do that okay so uh would you suggest this over being a real estate agent or yeah would you, who would you who would you suggest this to man i suggest this to man any and everybody man from the the 16 year old 15 year old high school to the forty-five-year-old to the fifty-year-old grown-up man, like I suggest any, any and everybody to do this. It's never too late. It's never too early. Why? You know, I've had some discussions with real estate agents, and every time I bring up wholesaling, it's like they got a, a sour look on their face or a for, forbidden mm -hmm. look on their face. Like, why is that? Why is there a stigma with wholesaling at this point? Um, could you speak on that? You know anything about that? Do you feel yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I could touch on that a little bit. Yeah, because I think realtors are under under the assumption that wholesalers and realtors are competing for properties, in which that's not true. Because the realtor, mm -hmm. he's he he or she that they're representing the seller or the buyer, and they're they're pretty much trying to sell the property for as much money as they can. Because the more money they sell the property for, the bigger they the commission. commission the, the more money get. As and then for wholesale, on the other hand, we trying to buy the property for the less. You know what I'm saying? For as less as possible, because the the um the lower we put it on the contract for for, the, for with the seller, the higher we could mark it up with the buyer in the in the big eye spread. Mm. And then so so we're trying to. Find pretty much, um, let's say, distressed sellers uh, and properties that need work. Realtors, they pretty much, they're um, they're seeking out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, homes that look a little better. You know, a little bit, a little bit better shape to Got put you. on MLS, put on the market. Got you. Talk to me about a little bit about you getting over your fears of communication and talking mm -hmm. to people is relationship building is obviously big in this game. So, you know, is it possible for a person to be successful who's maybe introverted? They don't talk a lot. Usually yeah. they're not trying to, you know, is it possible for them to make a name for themselves in this game? Man, yeah, definitely. That was one of my biggest fears, man, because I, cause I stutter sometimes. I'm not the most outgoing person, so I'm thinking like, man, like how am I going to be on these appointments and, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking, just thinking the worst. But once I went on that first appointment with Ruben and I just like, you know what I'm saying? Like just sparked up a regular conversation and just was talking mm -hmm. to him. And then you realize in a whole something like a lot of people will sell you, like sell you this whole a little, little idea that you need to be a salesman. You need not to sell this and that. But listen, man, when you, man, just you got, you got to think about the psychology behind the person who call you off a sign to sell their house. They're they ready to sell that. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're ready to sell their house. They don't need you to come with these fancy words and you know what I'm saying. All these tricks on how to close them, how to get a deal. Like you don't need to be the the um the world's best salesman to lock down these deals and make a lot of money. That that 
you don't need that. Man. Now it's good man, to man. have sales skills, but I'm just saying you don't yeah. need them like for the average person. You dropping jewels, man. You dropping heavy jewels. Yeah. Is this able are you able to do this anywhere across the country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You able to do this anywhere. Hmm. Okay, man. Well, damn. Damn, I, I'm so intrigued by this, man. Seventy thousand in two months. That's not some <laughs> sixty-seven. Sixty-seven thousand in two months. Yeah. That's just not something you see every day, man. That's that's real money talks. You know, we really getting somewhere with this, man. Mm -hmm. So but I appreciate you, man, stepping in the building, stepping in the gauntlet, giving giving up these these jewels, masterful jewels. If it's anything you could say closing out, you know, what would you say to the people who are thinking about getting into this? And, you know, what what direction should they go? Well, the people that's getting into this, first I say to probably go on a, um, a channel like the Flipman, Ty Taylor, look through his videos. It'll probably take you like a, um, probably take you like a month or two to go through all the information. Not You don't got to go through all the information, but just to get an idea of, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the steps in the process to close your first deal. And I start, like I said earlier, I do something like get some banded signs, drive for dollars, put out the signs, start driving in, you know what I'm saying, start talking to people, I guess, at your local, um, I know they got meetup groups, like real estate groups, and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, just to just to get around them kind of people just so you could kind of, you know what I'm saying, you could change your mindset and you could just, you know what I'm saying, get into the um, get into the whole floor, the whole um, whole selling, just whole real estate game in general. But I yeah, love to hear this. I, yeah, anybody out there who's thinking about doing it, man, I'll just do it, man. I mean, I, I ain't no motivational speaker, but I mean, I mean, hey, it's some money, man. What's the what's the work that comes with this? I don't want the people to think that's this yeah. is easy. Do you put in? Do you grind? It's simple, but it's not easy, man. Meaning, okay, can you do it? Yes. It, it, is it quote unquote easy to do? No, because I mean it. it it is a lot of work, but for me, I've never seen no business where you could put in, you know what I'm saying, the work I put in, and you re you could receive the, you know what I'm saying, the payoff at the end. That so it's definitely benefit. worth it. Yeah, it's definitely That's worth it. That's amazing benefit, man. Yeah. Okay, man. So let's close out with this. Do you have any plans within real estate? Are you eventually going to maybe own you a couple uh, rental properties and, you know, get a little bit of residual coming that way? How long you plan on? Wholesaling, man, because it seemed like those big checks keeping you happy, man. How? I, what, what you plan on doing next? Well, well, I'm partnered with a guy I used to work for. Um, I got Jeff down in um Visalia. We got two rentals down there, so I'm doing that as far as on the whole cash cash flow aspect. Dope. But um, right now, man, I'm looking to probably get me a um get me a fourplex by the end of this year. Hopefully, some more come on the market. I people mm -hmm. off market that I'm sending these direct mail to hopefully they'll be willing to sell and that's pretty much the, um that's pretty much the next step man right now because I because I, I was gonna do like you know what I'm saying get into a commercial and all that but right now man I ain't gonna lie man I'm comfortable with wholesaling man I like the whole get in and out of deals right now mm. any courses in the works given the game that you just gave jewels man you learned the game through flip yeah. man maybe you thinking about dropping some courses maybe sometime soon or yeah, man, I've definitely been talking to Kurt these last couple of months, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking to drop probably a channel. Man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say when, but dropping a channel soon, <laughs> man, on wholesaling. Take a look out for the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to give out the game, man. I'll just probably um, follow Flip, Flip Man Footsteps, man. I'm, I'm going to get a whole game away. And then if you need some uh, more um, additional help, man, I'll be glad to help you. And we could, you know what I'm saying, go from there. Okay, sounds good, man. D uh, anywhere where the people can reach you, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, where where can they find you if they're looking to get rid of their house? Somebody sees this and they're trying to get rid of their house. You got any contact information you want to give out? If not, it's all good. But, yeah, um, I got a phone number, and right now I got somebody. Nah, don't get that number. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna don't give out that. number. <laughs> yeah, I, I I got somebody working on my website. That. <laughs> yeah, so we get it finished, and then I'm gonna get. Like I said, as soon as I drop that channel, I'm gonna get my um my um social media media up, and then maybe I could come and drop a comment on the video in the future. Sounds good. Sounds good. So you five years in the game so far. Yeah. And up wholesaling done treated you right. 
Yeah, man. Wholesaling been good to me, man. I ain't worked a job since that since that since that <laughs> since that warehouse job, bro. <laughs> hey, man. Well, Eric, man, we appreciate you for stepping into Money Talks, man. You know, it's all love, man. I really appreciate you. This this was a great interview, man. Great, great gems. So, yo, people. Until next time, man. Money Talks. We out of here. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Long interview. I'm not going to talk your head off because hopefully we displayed enough information in that video for you to digest, soak in, and do as you will with it. But hopefully this is something that inspired you to really get up and go get some money. This man was able to accumulate $67,000 in a matter of two months. Now, of course, you know, the universe had a little bit to play in that. Him telling himself, this is what I'm going to do. I'm sticking to it. You know, all else fails because he was willing to go years. If he didn't get a deal within years, you know, he was going to stick with it and keep going. Just so happened he landed his first deal within two months. And that can be you too. Now, like he said, is that happening to everyone? Is everyone landing a deal in two months? No, but it could definitely happen. And if you stick with it, you'll be getting more consistent deals. This stream of income right here, it can allow you to invest in multiple different things. Whatever your endeavors may be, whatever industries you're looking to get into, whether it be crypto, real estate, the cannabis industry, this is something that will allow you to grow. This is something to where you can really start with absolutely nothing when I say absolutely nothing, I mean about $3,200, right? Shout out to Eric. But you can start with absolutely nothing and potentially grow, potentially start a million dollar business, man, with some of these numbers. With some of these numbers, depending on how many sales you're getting monthly or what type of money you're getting per deal. We, we talking, we talking million dollar moves. We're talking million dollar moves. So this wholesale thing is real. If you're interested, I'd advise you to get into it. I'd advise you to really do your research and go from there. You have to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes in this industry. But if you're going to do it, dive full force in because this is a very competitive industry. And a lot of these companies have this game on lock. But it's still a ton of room for the little man. Eric is a little man in this industry. He's a little man in this industry. So it's a ton of room for growth, a ton of room to prosper and go out and get it. It's enough money for everybody out here, especially in this industry. It is enough money for everybody in this industry. And there's always someone whose home is about to get foreclosed on. There's always someone who just passes away. People die every single day. And those people are looking to give up their home. So if you're interested, man, in wholesale, it just you full-fledged hop in. It's a great opportunity, great way to collect a bag and invest in other endeavors, whether it be in a real estate business or, like I said, in other industries. It just allows you to really be able to shake and move. So hopefully I didn't talk your head off. Hopefully you guys found this video inspiring. Um, make sure you like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys for tapping in. Until next time, Money Talks.